Hey guys, Stable here. Today we got a look at the tier 7 Asian destroyer Xinyang. There's Shai Chang on the screen there. Uh, there's the build when the ship's completed. This game that we're about to see was not fully uh, modded out. I think there was either just the hull upgrade or perhaps the hull upgrade and the torpedoes. Uh, the hull, of course, adds HP and makes the turning a little bit better on the ship. The hull should usually be what you upgrade first on any ship, in my opinion. And then second mod we put on, uh, Torpedo Mod, reduces the detectability of the torps a little bit, makes it a little bit harder to dodge, uh, and ups the damage. Okay, so they're already hard to dodge, these deep water torps. They are not on the screen very long. Of course, they sail under destroyers. If you're not familiar with the deep water torps, it's kind of the trade-off. You can't hit destroyers with them, but they hit uh, pretty hard on the battleships, cruisers, and carriers, and they have very low detectability and an enhanced uh, chance to damage engines and steering and stuff like that. So that's kind of the breakdown on the torps. And then finally, the gun mod, which I know for sure I don't have in this game, adds distance. I think the firing range gets to be 11.5 when we get that on there. Oh, and the torpedo adds another kilometer of uh, coverage as well to the torpedo mod. The torpedo mod, rather, adds another kilometer to the range of the torp chest. Okay. Topping them out at nine. This game, I think they'll be, we'll be able to tell if it's eight or nine kilometers, whether the mod's on there or not. Anyway, Atlantic uh, domination mode, two destroyers. Now we elect to go into B here. And we're basically just saying, okay, well, let's keep an eye on the map. A, B, C, see where the destroyers uh, pop up. But I do want you guys to keep an eye on the map throughout this game, okay? Because we always talk about domination mode kind of the uh, the effective playing area you know where you should be playing throughout the game and this match we're going to go from b to h back through b and then d into c and you're going to see we never really deviate that far north or south from these caps that's kind of where we want to be controlling and we do a really good job doing that so we do have a pretty decent team here we have an alaska that will have a 3,000 point game uh, but we get the second highest score and it's just kind of a working man's uh, destroyer game so here we're noting that the Shima is getting uh, spotted or perhaps radared. Keeping an eye on him. Looks like he's trying to decide should he break to the east or west. Now I'm trying to cut him off here. We're also in the process of capturing the base, of course. So basically we're trying to eliminate his options here. He can either go back towards A, he can go south back towards his team. Or if he tries to disengage by going east, well, we got a little bit of a surprise for him over here that he may not be expecting. We haven't been spotted yet, so... He doesn't really know, aside from the fact that we got B, that there's a destroyer over here. We do see destroyer likely on C. Something's on C. Of course, our team's completely abandoned that side for whatever reason, so we can only assume it's the destroyer at this point in time. Now we pick up the Alaska. I think it's us spotting him, and he's low. Luckily, the team uh, is going to chime in and take him off. Radar cruiser, of course, so it's kind of a dangerous proposition to have him around for a destroyer anyways. But the guns on the Alaska and the ship in general is just a very strong ship. So good job of the teammates noting that the Alaska was low there. They got rid of him. Trying to get some torps through this gap on the Georgia. But by the time we can get the aim indicator around, he's kind of already sped up. Probably would have, wouldn't have been able to hit him anyways. Well, we're just kind of trying to slow things down here. Because we don't currently control A, but our team vastly... Uh, you know, has overloaded that side. It overwhelms the enemy team there, outnumbers them. Uh, and we got to assume eventually they'll get A, okay? We've obviously lost C, but we do currently hold the middle and domination mode. We want to control one flank and the middle, of course. So we're trying to do our best to hold B as long as possible. But we're understanding that the bulk of our force is way off to the west. And we got a bunch of guys up north for some reason. So, you know, these ships, these red ships, whenever they choose to push into us, there's nothing we can do about it, and we need to stay alive here. We're the only destroyer left on this team, and it's way too early to be down both destroyers for these guys. They'll never uh, be able to hack it if we go down early here. So keeping an eye on you know, how willing they are to push into us. There's the cruiser. that That's the main ship we're mainly worried about here, the Edinburgh. Not sure, of course, if he's got the radar or smoke, but we got to assume he's got the radar until proven otherwise. So we're moving away from him. Yes, he's going to get on the cap. Yes, he's going to flip B. But once again, we cannot stop that. Okay, so we're relying on our team here, trying to spot them. Maybe going to take a shot or two as we go around the island here. But 
you know, since we don't have the torps ready, nothing we can really do. Just disengage, stay alive, we're spotted here, uh, keeping an eye on that. Uh, th saying to ourselves, okay, uh, at first well, I thought it was probably the destroyer down on A, but um, you could see he died there. Couldn't really tell on the map if he was, uh, if he had a line of sight on us or not, um, but it's also possible that there's a destroyer to the north, perhaps even moved into B here, although I think it's the Edinburgh that's uh, capturing the base, so... Keeping an eye on the spotting, keeping an eye on, you know, what the detection's trying to tell us. Slammed, we hit the engine boost trying to get the points for coming over here. Uh, but A was captured by our team. Anyways, no big deal. We immediately go back around here. Now we're trying to decide should we go north or south of this island to the left of us. And if we go south, we can get cut off from our team. Uh, maybe get rushed and taken out here. So we're going to elect to go back into the side of the board that we spawn on and in general as a destroyer player when we're moving horizontally from cap to cap to cap you would prefer to uh do it on your side of the board that you spawned on uh just generally there's going to be more friendly ships there less red ships there and it's just going to be a safer all-around proposition really big widespreads coming in there but uh they run out before they even get to us but now we're thinking to ourselves, okay, what if this Edinburgh is right around the corner here? So we actually turn away, even though we want to pressure B, we actually want to get on B, because you can see they're going to be gaining three points every five seconds in the background, as long as they have B and C. And, you know, we want to stop that as quickly as possible. But once again, we need to understand what we can physically do. Okay, slamming into an Edinburgh and a Lion or whatever that other ship was in there uh, with more battleships even to the north uh, would be a bad idea and this is what we talk about as a destroyer player you got to be careful about not getting surrounded right like we've moved forward or forward about as far as we can go here at this point in time but look at this georgia here if he continues to move to the west or southwest now he begins to envelop us from the north there's also uh something else to the northeast another battleship and uh you know we need to be worrying about these guys pushing forward here then we could have the edinburgh and whatever else coming from the east a lot of ships coming from different angles here, and then if this happens here and the smoke runs out, then we're going to have a hard time disengaging. Look at the twist and track pointing off uh, kind of behind our ship, and I didn't even give this proper consideration when I was playing this. I just assumed it was pointing at the Georgia, but that's clearly faulty. The Georgia's farther away from the guys that are on the cap, so we should be able to rule him out. Uh, this is just a misread. There was a lot of... A lot of stuff I want to be doing during the sequence and didn't read the twist and track correctly. So we could have known better, or with more certainty rather, that the uh, destroyer was in the region. Um, but once again, we're trying to, you know, kind of pressure B as much as we can. Luckily, we just happen to be kind of turning this way anyways. That's how we would have wa wanted to have responded had we known for sure that it was the destroyer, which we should have been able to uh, know. But luck we did uh, respond to it the same way. Uh, either way now moving forward here we can see if we spot the destroyer or not don't spot him when we come out of the cloud still got about 30 seconds left on it so we might just want to keep it available to use if need be i just want to pop out of there quickly and take a peek see if uh, we would spot the destroyer since we did note that he dislaunched the torps from the north there trying to get a shot on the line not going to do much i'm trying to kind of get him moving off of b here because the longer that they control these two caps, even though we continue to hold the ship lead, uh, the harder it is for us to guarantee a score win. Because if they go ahead and come back, sink a couple more ships, then they're going to be comfortably in the lead, okay, when that happens. So trying to get uh, this guy pressured, feeling the heat. And I'm thinking at this point in time we could just straight up charge him, uh, keep at least three kilometers between us and him, but then also keep this island in between us. And that way, whenever he moves left or right, we'd be able to blast him with the torps. Uh, Edinburgh pushing in and once again we don't we haven't seen any evidence of a radar this game but we got to assume at this point in time there is a radar on that thing and it's also a British light cruiser and those things can tear destroyers to shreds so I'm very nervous at this point in time hoping the teammates going to uh, shoot him and that's why we're pinging the radio like a madman everybody on the team needs to be killing this thing okay because first step for their comeback kill the destroyer that limits our ability to make plays on the caps, and it makes it harder in terms of spotting and everything else. You can see we got more ships, obviously, but we got a lot of guys that are spread out kind of all over the place. And we definitely control one-third of the map, whereas map control-wise, they're still more in control of two-thirds of the map. Uh, here are the Kansas. 
took a shot a moment ago. Now we had some torps at the line. Set the line on fire. Go ahead and switch over the Kansas just to make sure he's feeling some love. Making him say to himself, oh, okay, now the destroyer's thinking about us. I better move just in case he's launching torps here. Do get a fire as well. And then look at this, the line, uh, we get him with one, two, and three, and all three of them hit floods on him, <laughs> interestingly enough, but before we can accrue any damage there, the Alaska, who's going to wind up having an outstanding score, just blasts him into oblivion. And now we're uh, finally capturing B here after hoping, you know, kind of pressuring B with our position for a long time, but unable to actually physically, uh, you know, contest the cap just due to the control that red had over this area but we kind of whittled them down good job with the team uh, picking the targets that they can do damage to and one by one we just kind of loosened up the area on b and that's just kind of the patience you got to have sometimes you know that you know for the last probably six seven minutes of the match i wanted to get back on b but we had to wait until the time was right and we had to under identify the point in time where we could say yeah we actually can get on B at this point in time without committing suicide because that doesn't do anyone any good and you know just kind of sticking with the game plan there allowed our team to take a good solid lead here that uh gonna be very hard for red to come back from now we're going ahead we're spraying him here over the ridge here I was shooting for a couple reasons number one we wanted to see you know when did we drop spot okay was it when the Kansas went behind the island which it was in this case, or would we continue to be spotted once we broke that line of sight? And then we can get more clues about the destroyers. But we've already seen them kind of torping, again, from the north, uh, northwest position. He's one of those destroyers that got behind the blue team or the red team on his screen and just tried to torp them the whole game, ignored the caps. Whereas if you go back, watch this game in uh, fast mode, you'll basically see we drew an oval roughly around these caps. And we've stayed basically in that oval. The entirety of the game here knew we were going to get spotted here going for a little bit of a suicide rush understanding that he's going to be turning hard for us on his screen it said enemy destroyer spotted so there's audio cues and if he's paying attention at all he should know that we're pretty close to him so as soon as the game alerted him that the destroyer is on uh, his case he's going to be turning out from us that does create a crossfire though with the vicious guns that are <laughs> to the south of him and including the alaska who tears him to shreds once again uh, good shooting for that guy and even though we probably would have missed those torps there once again, I think they did have an effect on his unwillingness to angle a ship. Either way, a uh, pretty good result over here. Now, do I think the Shenyang is worth the grind? I think the line's pretty good. The Gajamata and the Shenyang, you know, I kind of view them, if you're going to run them as smoke destroyers, as kind of like British lights. You know, you don't, instead of the six uh, smokes you have on the Brits, that cycle even quicker. Uh, these ones, you got four, and they're still fast cycling uh, smokes, but they're not quite as fast. So a little bit more usable long-term in terms of duration and whatever. Uh, but you don't get them as quickly, and you don't get them as often. So that's the kind of the closest comparison, running it with the smoke on it. Or the Tier 6, Tier 7, you do have the option for the radar. Now, the radar is going to be a very short duration. You might get two or three blasts, and I think it's... If I recall, it's like a 7.5 kilometer, whatever it is. I mean, it's not the most effective radar in the world. The way I'm kind of looking at it is the smoke's always going to be useful in every game, whereas the radar is going to be situationally useful. You know, are you fighting a destroyer who pops the smoke and then all of a sudden nobody else has a line of sight on you? Boom, then you can use the radar, then you can kill that destroyer using that tool. Otherwise, you know, it can be dangerous and it's always good to have disengagement tools, so... I think the smoke's the stronger of the two plays. Of course, if you're going the variety is the spice of life approach to this line, then of course you'd probably want to put the uh, radars on there. And you can run either. I, I played the Gaja the entire way through with the radar, and I thought it did a great job. But up here, you know, Tier 7, I'm thinking, well, we'll probably just keep the smoke on this one and uh, run it more traditionally. Again, fairly similar to the Brits, a little bit key differences. But uh, anyway... That's a look at the Shenyang for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. And if you did, please hit the thumbs up. Hey, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. We've got lots of World of Warships coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you. And we'll see you later. Peace.